Hey, this is Brian from MA Motorsports. Uh, we are going to be installing a Link G4X ECU into our uh, R32 GTR shop car. Devin is gonna show you how he assembled this. Uh, while they are plug and play ECUs, they call them, you still have to do a little bit of work to uh, put it in your factory case. And Devin is gonna show you how we do that. There's a couple little tricks that, uh, that we do that maybe some other places don't do. And so I'm gonna turn this over to Devin. He's gonna show you how to do it. And it's definitely gonna be worth the watch if you have to install one of these yourself. Hey guys, Devin from MA Motorsports here. And uh, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install a Link G4X plug and play board into an R32 GTR ECU case. So we've got a shop car here that we've been building for a while. Um, it's an R32 GTR we picked up a while ago, the engine's in it, time to put the electronics package, package together. So here we are, we've got our ECU, so ECU's in this box, got a CAN connection cable, so we're going to be running a Link CAN Lambda wideband, uh, an expansion harness that will also plug in because we're going to be running a couple of extra sensors, fuel pressure, oil pressure, uh, a couple tools we're going to need, a piece of vacuum hose, bucket fitting, some, some simple tools. Got a screwdriver, a pair of snips, a pair of pliers in case the bolts get crazy, but this ECU looks like it's in pretty good shape, uh, aside from being dirty, so it's not a big deal. So, uh, these G4X plug-and-play boxes are pretty sweet. It's essentially just a G4X Extreme um, designed to fit into a factory mount casing. So, uh, whereas some of the other ECU companies make a fantastic product, they don't have an option that will fit directly into a factory case, so you end up with an extra adapter harness or something in there, um, which is great if you're doing a full like motorsports application where you've got all the space in the world, but for something where you need to be able to stick this underneath a kick panel in your car because you've got a full interior because it's a street car, uh, that's where the link stuff comes in really handy because it will just fit in. Um, depending on the configuration, these things can run up to I think it's eight cylinders, uh, direct, you know, sequential uh, fuel, sequential ignition. You're going to do flex fuel with them, provided you've got the sensoring in there. Um, you know, closed loop boost control, closed loop fueling, everything on them is pretty nice. They don't do, on the extreme boxes, on band wide, or on board wide band. So we've got this guy here so that we can run a can lambda separately. All right, so when you open up your link box, this is what you'll see. You've got... The board itself in a nice anti-static bag here, it's taped up, tells you tension on the back. In here, just to open, tuning cable, that's going to come with it, very important piece. Anti-static wrist strap, use that for the install, and then uh, everyone loves stickers down in here. We've got some big and small link stickers, as well as the instruction manual. First step disassembling an ECU. First step, we're going to pull all these bolts off the top so we can see what, we're, what it looks like inside. Let's see what exactly we are working with. Um, it's generally a good idea to keep track of these bolts, keep them off the side somewhere, just so you don't lose them because you're going to need them uh, here shortly once we get everything installed properly. So, lid off. That's the inside of an ECU. Uh, this is your first time looking at this. Don't be alarmed, it's all coming out. Flip it over. Pull the cover off the back side as well, just so we don't have these annoying tabs getting in the way while we're trying to manipulate it and move everything around. Hand this stuff to the sack of hardware. And that's the rear cover off. So, back of an ECU. If this were something that we're going back together, uh, you know, put it on something that's not just a table, but we are basically just going to throw this whole piece out because we don't need it, so it's not a big deal. All right, the little daughter board in here has to come off. And if you are doing a Nissan ECU, it's from the 90s. So don't forget to pull these two on the back here. You won't see any pieces holding them in place. However, these two screws hold the knob to set the ECU in different modes. This is where you would 
what you would use to check codes on them initially. Uh, from here on out, we will just use the onboard diagnostic stuff that is available with the Link ECU. Uh, they do a really good job of giving you different codes uh, for any sensor issues that you're having, or if you exceed the maximum injector duty cycle that you've got programmed in there or something. Um, it's really good at telling you and letting you know what's happening with that. It's got a built-in check engine light functionality, so all of that works the way that it should. these bolts out as well. Um, a lot of times you'll see these have some solder on them. Um, it's a very interesting thing that Nissan does. I'm not really sure why. I think it's just so that you can't remove these. Uh, you're going to see it on some boards, not all of them. It makes it a little bit of a pain to get out because you've got to heat it enough to melt the solder, enough to get your screwdriver in there, enough to pull it loose. Okay, so that's everything disconnected from the board. Just want to take it, slide it out, so we can make it not get stuck, and then set it up to the side because you're done with it. So we are left with just a case. Simple, easy, nothing major. So from here, uh, I will grab a piece of cardboard conveniently given to us by Link. Get that out of the way. This guy, because this is our actual new ECU. So on here we've got obviously factory Nissan header. These are available for obviously different chassis. Uh, this one fits our chassis cars except for GTTs, our 34 GTTs. So uh, Neo engines use a different ECU header, so it will not work with this, but this will work with. Um, R32, 33, and 34 GTRs, as well as GTSTs, and presumably would work with an RB20E, but no one does anything with those. So, in here, right here, you've got your USB tuning cable, the other half of it. So this will stay, this bit will stay in the ECU all the time. We'll have that wire passing out, just so that you can then use this, where it plugs right in, here on the end, that just plug in. Here we've got our CAN lines, CAN 1 and CAN 2. Uh, and then over here we have two expansion cables. Uh, that's where that harness I showed you earlier is going to go. Uh, and it's just got different inputs and outputs, uh, things that aren't available to use in the ECU header itself. So we're going to get this loosely fit into the box so we can figure out what we need to drill and where we need to drill it. And then we'll, uh, we'll make that happen. So first step, I always like to... Pull the USB cable out. Just, uh, just gonna try to fit and plan everything. So, so, so this is gonna have to come out because it uses this screw. So we're gonna retain this and these two side screws as well. Let's see, so this is how the box is going to sit in there. It will basically sit like this, up against the, yeah, like this, up against the firewall in the car. It will end up sitting like this, so we're going to end up passing all the wiring out of this slotted hole here. We're going to enlarge this a little bit, pass all the wiring through it. The map sensor built in here, it's a seven bar map sensor. Uh, we will not be feeding it out through this back plate because this will be up against the firewall. So realistically, you want to feed it out of the sides uh, that will be facing upwards so that it doesn't have any restriction. So you're not pinching this line off against the firewall. So basically, you pop it out through one of these holes up here. You enlarge it, obviously. Pop it out through one of these holes so that it can flow air without having any issues. And we will end up using this little bulkhead that we found, uh, and they work great. Um, basically you just drill this hole out, bolt that in there, and then you're good. So, this is roughly where that is, and we know 
we have to fit this, you know, this cable and these two other cables have to go through there as well. So we've got tuning cable, expansion cable, which this is the big one. So that's gonna have to fit through there. As well as the CAN communications cable, which this guy's pretty small, pretty easy. It's in a bag even. So that's gonna be this. Simple connector, nothing crazy. Nope on these CAN communication cables. There's also a black and red wire that come off of them. These need to go to 12 volt and a ground. Um, this is just CAN communication only here. So nothing else on that. This is 12 volt and a ground. Uh, and then it comes into a nice four pin DTM. It's a nice setup. You can't pull the wires out of the back of it. This is all um, encased in like a silicone on the back edge. They work really great. So if you take a look at this case right here, uh, you'll see some sharpie marks in and along here uh, and this is a pre-existing hole where the factory diagnostic leds would sit uh, i'm going to open this up uh, this hole will be opened up as wide as these sharpie marks so basically the entire width of this opening here and as high as that sharpie mark i probably won't go any lower with it just to be able to get all those wires through so we've got that and then on the other end over here uh, it's going to be this hole that we're going to drill out to fit our bulkhead pass through. So. All right, so uh, I just went and cut the case, um, cut it here for the wiring, hole drilled down here for the bulkhead pass through for the map sensor. So we are going to set the ECU in the case and then install all of the ancillary components onto it, and we should have a fully functioning ECU at that point. So, drops in for these three across the top. I'm gonna to reuse the hardware that Link gave us, uh, just cause it's nice and it doesn't have solder on it. Use, actually, I'm going to use different factory hardware. Some of the bolts out of the side will, in fact, work for this. It's always nice because you don't have that solder filled junk going back into it. Put all these in, snug them up a little bit, don't need to be super tight. It's not there's any force on the thing. So that's an ECU in a case. So from there, I have found it's easiest to pass any wiring through from the outside in, since you're not trying to pass six feet of wire, you only need to put, you know, 10 inches or so. Wire into the box. So straighten this out a little bit. I also always like to go the large one first. So in that case, in our case, that's the expansion loom. And let's see, just sort of pull it over a tiny bit, slide it in, push it through, and there you go. So if you'll take a look over on these sides, you've got the two expansion loom plugins. Uh, this top one up here is what we're going to use because it's got the analog voltage and digital ins and temperature inputs. Uh, the bottom has some ignition outputs, uh, a couple voltage inputs and digital ins, but no temp inputs. And on this, we are going to be using extra temp for um, fuel and or oil certainly and probably fuel temp as well just to kind of keep an eye on things the more data you have the better everything goes um so i'm gonna drag it around and it just clicks in nicely on top put that in scoot the wiring off to the side next up is going to be our usb cable we removed earlier again sort of same thing just kind of fold the wires slide it in Goes in much the same. Pull back through, click it in. So, leaving us with our CAN cable. Once again, undo the bread tie. Pull it out, and this is like I said earlier, just a 12 volt and a ground to power up anything on the CAN network. Uh, it needs to run to switch to 12 volt, not constant, or else your wideband and or dash will never shut off. 
and your actual CAN communication with the ECU. Um, like I said earlier, there are two CAN buses on this. It's CAN 1 and CAN 2. Uh, you can run it on either one. I generally run CAN 1. Just make a note of whichever one you use so that you can, uh, when you go to configure everything in the ECU, you can do that properly. So this one, I'm going to be running on CAN 1, which here is faced towards the outside. So click that in. There is all of your wiring. So uh, these expansion looms for the extra wiring here, uh, fantastic piece of piece of unit. Um, they're very long. We normally will terminate this about here with a um, Deutsch DTM connector. Um, I'm not entirely sure what exactly we're going to be using in this input and output uh, expansion loom yet. So I'm just going to leave this tied up for now. It will get terminated at a later date once we figure out exactly what sensors are going in the car. We still have to um, acquire all of the sensors for it. Right now we've just got some basic stuff to start putting some stuff together. Uh, last thing, so we need to get this guy in. Thread to get the unit. So let's go grab something. Hold up. Shop shirt gang. What up? What up? Skull what up? Ah. Went out there, tightened this guy up so it's not going anywhere. Nice and firm. Got a piece of silicone vacuum hose. Nothing crazy. We just slide it on the map sensor back here. Gonna put a zip tie on that in a second. Wrap it around, slide it on the map sensor up here. Slide it on the map sensor. And then, it's as simple as put the cases back on. So, start with this side. Now, conveniently on these cases, they have some cutouts that line up with little pins on the K or on the, the center housing so makes it easy to line up so you don't get it wrong. Flip it over and repeat on this side. There's a tab up here to cut out underneath this bracket. All right, so that just about wraps up the install of our Link G4X plug-in ECU board. Thank you so much for watching. As always, uh, gonna give you some more updates on this car in a separate video. Just wanted to uh, do one on just the Link ECU because again, we really love the product. We use it in almost every single car that we build. So definitely check them out. You can find their whole product line on our website if you're interested. Uh, you can always email us, drop a message here, comment, whatever. Happy to answer any questions on uh, this particular Link ECU or any uh, Link product.